welcome to lecture 23. This is week 5 and we are talking about unconstrained optimization of single variable problems, methods and applications. So, under unconstrained single variable optimization methods and applications, we have already talked about the bracketing methods. We have talked about exhaustive search method in the previous lecture. So, in this lecture, we will start talking about region elimination method. So, this was the agenda in the week 5 and today's topic will be dichotomous search and interval halving that come under region elimination method. So, this was the general classification of single variable optimization methods. We divided them into two categories direct search method or zero order methods and methods requiring derivatives also known as descent methods. We have talked about bracketing methods under direct search methods and today we will start our discussion on region elimination method which is also within direct search methods. Direct search methods that locate optimal point of a single variable function by successively eliminating sub intervals so as to reduce the remaining interval of search are called region elimination method. So, region elimination method is a direct search method and what it does is it locate optimal point of a single variable function by successively reducing the length of the interval. After we have bracketed the optimum as the figure shows the minimum lies between A and B, the region elimination method can be used to improve the accuracy of the solution. That means, region elimination method can be used to reduce the length of the interval. It is also known as the interval of uncertainty. So, remember the optimal point will always be bracketed within an interval. Using direct search methods that we are talking about, we will not be able to find out the optimal point exactly, but what we will do is we will bracket the optimum within an interval and with number of iterations this interval can be reduced to a very small interval thereby improving the accuracy of the solution found. So, when the optimal point is bracketed within a very small interval, the best estimate of the optimal solution is the midpoint of this interval. So, let us now look at the fundamental rule for region elimination. Look at the figure the minimum point lies between A and B. So, my initial interval is A B. Now, to reduce this interval or to eliminate a region, we need to evaluate functions at two different points within the interval. So, let us consider those two points as x 1 and x 2. Now, when once you evaluate the function at x 1 and x 2, three scenarios can happen. The function value at x 1 is greater than the function value of x 2. In that case, the minimum cannot lie in A x 1. So, if the function value at x 1 is less than the function value of x 2, 
the unimodality of the function tells us that the minimum cannot lie between a and x 1. Similarly, if the function value of x 1 is less than function value of x 2, the minimum cannot lie between x 2 and b. Again this is due to unimodality of the function. You remember we discussed that for the unimodal function, how this x 1, x 2 and the optimal point are related and how their function values are related. So, if f of x 1 is equal to f of x 2 that means, the function values at x 1 and x 2 are same then the minimum point cannot lie between a x 1 and x 2 b the minimum point will lie between x 1 and x 2. So, these are the fundamental rule for region of elimination. You can see from the figure itself that the function value at x 1 is greater than the function value of x 2 and definitely the function cannot have a minimum between a and x 1. Now, next question we will ask is how do we place these x 1 and x 2 points which we call as trial points. Note that the depending on the function values we will delete we will delete either a x 1 or x 2 b or both. This we do by applying the fundamental rule for region elimination. Now, in order to reduce the interval of uncertainty that means, the interval within which the optimum will lie you would like to maximize the length of a x 1 or x 2 b. That means, to reduce the interval of uncertainty or to improve the accuracy of the optimal solution you would like to have the optimal point be bracketed within a small interval. So, to achieve that you would like to delete as much part of the region as possible. So, you would like to maximize the length a x 1 or x 2 b when you eliminate them on the basis of function values at x 1 and x 2. To maximize both we should place x 1 and x 2 symmetrically in the interval a b. So, what it means? We will try to place x 1 and x 2 at equal distance from a and b. In other words, we should place x 1 and x 2 symmetrically in the interval a and b. So, how these x 1 and x 2 points are symmetrically placed within the interval a and b depends on the type of method we are talking about. So, the methods that we discuss here they will all try to place x 1 and x 2 symmetrically with the interval a and b, but they all follow different logic. So, their performance is different. So, the first region elimination method that we talk about is dichotomous search. This is a very simple region elimination method. Look at the figure shown, the optimum is bracketed in the interval a and b. Let us first find out the midpoint c. 
So, dichotomous method first computes the midpoint C as A plus B by 2 and then moves slightly to either side of the midpoint to compute two test points or trial points those x 1 and x 2. So, if you look at the figure, so this is one trial point or test point and this is another trial point or test point both are symmetrically placed around C and since C is midpoint. So, both these two new trial points are symmetrically placed from A and B. So, these two points are A plus B by 2 minus epsilon and A plus B by 2 plus epsilon. where epsilon is a small number. Now, once we have obtained these two new trial points at a distance of a plus b by 2 minus epsilon and a plus b by 2 plus epsilon, we will find out the function values at both these new trial points. So, let us find out the function values. So, this is the function value at let us say this point we call x 1 and this point we call x 2. So, this is the function value at f of x 1 and this is the function value at x 2. Now, based on the function values and the unimodality assumption, the interval is updated by eliminating one part and the procedure continues until the optimum solution is contained in a very small interval or until the final interval of uncertainty is very small. So, basically what you do is once the optimal point is bracketed in an interval, I first find the midpoint of the interval and then move slightly to either side of the midpoint to get to new test points. Evaluate the functions at these two new points. Now, based on the function values, and assuming that the function is unimodal, we will be able to eliminate a part of the region. So, the region is now updated and again we find out the midpoint of this new interval and continue until I am able to bracket the minimum in a very small interval. So, as the figure suggests here, the function value at x 1 is less than the function value at x 2. So, definitely the minimum does not lie between x 2 and b. So, what I will do is I will take x 2 as nu b and my interval now will be this a to x 2 which is renamed as b. So, I find out the midpoint of this new interval and again two symmetric points around it and continue the process. This method is also known as method of bisecting. So, this can be put in an algorithm. Let us consider I am minimizing the function f x. 
initial interval uncertainty is given as a and b. Let us set the iteration counter k equal to 0. I set a to the power k a k equal to a b k equal to b if silent greater than 0. That means, the value of k value of a at k iteration is a value of b at k iteration is b k equal to 0. So, it is the initial values. Let us call l equal to final length of uncertainty. So, basically I will stop my algorithm when the interval of uncertainty is less or equal to l. So, as long as b k minus a k is greater than l that means, as long as the interval of uncertainty is greater than the given final length of uncertainty l, I do these steps. So, I get two midpoints, I say I think I get two points around midpoint, evaluate the function value. If function value at alpha k is greater than that of beta k, I consider alpha k as the new a at k plus what iteration and b k is considered as b at k iteration k plus 1th iteration. But if the function value of alpha k is less than the function value of beta k, then beta k is considered as nu b at k plus 1th iteration. So, this is what is happening in the figure. Here the function value at alpha k is less than the function value at beta k. So, in the k plus 1th iteration this beta k becomes my nu b at k plus 1 and this remains same as at k plus 1th iteration. So, I get the new interval and I go to the next iteration. I will stop when the length of uncertainty or the length of in the interval is less than the given final length of uncertainty L. At that point, the estimate of the optimal solution will be the midpoint of the interval. So, the final interval of uncertainty after n experiments or n function evaluations where n is given is b minus a by 2 to the power n by 2 plus epsilon into 1 minus 1 by 2 to the power n by 2, where epsilon is a small number. So, let us take an example. Consider the function f x equal to 1 by 4 x to the power 4 minus 5 by 3 x cube minus 6 x square plus 19 x minus 7 we use epsilon equal to 0 0.01. Again although it is not necessary, but we can always plot this one dimensional function and can learn about the nature of the function. So, as you see from the figure, the figure the function shows a minimum around this. So, around minus 2.5 around x equal to minus 2.5 the function shows a minimum. So, this is how I compute in a tabular form. 
So, the first column represents iterations and this a k and b k are shown here. So, I start my initial search within the interval minus 4 0. So, the initial interval is given as minus 4 0. So, this is shown here. So, this is the length of the interval b minus a. This is the function value at a at each iteration, this is the function value at b at each iteration. So, basically based on these two function values, you eliminate a part of the region and update the interval as we discussed in the previous slides. So, as you see very quickly in fact, I have gone to close to the optimal solution minus 2.5 or 2.56. So, I have shown it up to 10 iterations. So, after the 10th iterations, the optimal point is the midpoint of this. Note here one end of this interval is minus 2.5, but the other end is minus 3. So, here if you calculate the x optimum, it will not be minus 2.5 it will be minus 3 minus 2.49 divided by 2. But when you come here, you are very very close to minus 2.56 because the midpoint of this. You can also look at the length of the interval has been very small in 10th interval, 10th iterations. So, this is how you can solve one dimensional minimization problem using dichotomous search method. Let us talk about another region elimination method known as interval halving method. Once the optimum has been bracketed, region elimination method gives us a more refined estimate of the optimum by eliminating a certain amount of the sub interval at each step. So, as we go from one iteration to another, we would like to reduce this length of the interval with every iterations. One way of doing that, we have seen when you discuss dichotomous search method. Another way of improving the optimal point by successively reducing the interval will be discussed now and this method is known as interval halving method. Interval halving method eliminates exactly one half of the interval at each stage by considering three equally spaced trial points. These three points divide the interval into four equal regions. Note in case of dichotomous search, given the interval a b, we considered two points to eliminate the part of a region. In case of interval halving method, we consider three 
equally spaced trial points within the interval a b. So, three equally spaced trial points will divide the interval into four equal parts. Look at the figure. The initial interval is a b. I have taken three equally spaced trial points. So, these trial points divide the interval a b into four equal region a x 1, x 1 x m, x m x 2, x 2 b. So, now we need to evaluate the functions at x 1, x m and x 2 and then using fundamental rule for region elimination, I will be able to eliminate exactly one half of the interval at each stage. How? Let us see. If the function value at x 1 is less than the function value at x m, the minimum cannot lie beyond x m. So, in that case, we will eliminate x m to b this is 50 percent. So, if f of x 1 is less than f of x m, obviously the minimum will not lie in the region x m to b. So, this entire region can be eliminated, this is 50 percent. But if f of x 1 is greater than f of x m, the minimum will definitely not lie within a x 1. This is what is shown in the figure. So, in this figure, the function value at x 1 is greater than the function value at x m. So, minimum definitely does not lie within a x 1, but this is one fourth of the interval a b. So, I have been able to eliminate a x 1 which is 25 percent. So, now I compare the function value at x m and at x 2 to eliminate further 25 percent of the search space. So, that way I will be able to eliminate 50 percent. So, let us put this in the form of an algorithm. Given the initial interval a b, initial length of the interval is L 0 is b minus a, we define a small number epsilon, we are considering this to be positive. So, x m is the midpoint of the interval a b. So, x m can be computed as a plus b by 2. We evaluate the function value at x m. Now, we set x 1 as a plus l by 4, l is this L 0 equal to L let us say. So, x 1 is set as a plus L by 4 because each this is L by 4. Similarly, x 2 is B minus L by 4. So, I have x 1, x 2, x m x m is a plus b by 2. That means, x m equal to a plus l by 4 plus l by 4. 
Now, you evaluate the function at x 1 as well as x 2. If the function value at x 1 is less than function value of x m, we will be able to eliminate the region x m b. So, the new b is x m. So, this basically will be brought here. This figure does not show that, but if the function value at x 1 is less than function value x m, this entire region will be eliminated and we will set b as x m and x m will be set as x 1. So, we will go to step 5. Otherwise, we will go to step 4. Let us see what is step 4 and step 5. If the function value of x 2 is less than function value of x m, we will set a as x m, x m equal to x 2 and then go to step 5. Otherwise, we will set a equal to x 1, b equal to x 2 and go to step 5. In the step 5, we will check whether the length of the interval is less than a small value or not. If it is the length of interval is very small, we will stop. Otherwise, we will go to step 2, where we repeat this entire process. That means, the updated interval again will be divided into 3 points, which will divide the entire interval into 4 equal parts. So, again we will consider 3 equally spaced points, so that the entire new interval is divided into 4 equal parts and we will continue. At each stage of the algorithm, exactly half the length of the search interval is removed. The midpoint of subsequent intervals is always equal to one of the previous trial points x 1, x 2 or x m. Thus, at most two function evaluations are necessary at each subsequent step. Note that although we consider three trial points x 1, x 2 and x m, but the midpoint of the subsequent intervals is always equal to one of the previous trial points x 1, x 2 or x m. So, we will need at most two function evaluations at each subsequent iterations. At the initial stage, of course, we will need function evaluations at all x 1, x 2 and x m, three function evaluations there, but in subsequent steps, one function evaluation will be available from previous steps. So, we will be evaluating functions at two points. The interval of uncertainty remaining at the end of n function evaluations can be given as l n equal to half to the power n minus 1 by 2 into l 0, where l 0 is the initial length of the interval and l n represents the length of the interval after n function evaluations. Here we consider n is greater or equal to 3 and n is odd. So, let us consider another example, find the minimum of f x equal to x into x minus 1.5 in the interval 0 1 to within 10 percent of the exact value. If the middle point of the final interval of uncertainty is taken as the optimum point, the specified accuracy can be achieved if 1 by 2 l n is less or equal to l 0 by 10 or 1 by 2 whole to the power n minus 1 by 2 into L 0 is less or equal to L 0 by 5. Since L 0 equal to 1, my interval is 0 to 1. So, L 0 equal to 1, we can write 1 by 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 is less or equal to 1 by 5, which gives n equal to 7, considering that n is odd. So, the initial length is interval is 0 to 1. 
So, three points are considered equally spaced. So, there are four equal intervals, each will be 0.25. So, x1 equal to 0.25, xm equal to 0.5, and x2 equal to 0.75. We will find out the function values at all of these points. Now, you note the function values f 1 is greater than f m is greater than f 2. So, you can delete the interval a x m which is 0 to 0 0.5. Now, we will set x 2 and x m as the new x m and a. So, a equal to 0.5, x m equal to 0.75 and b equal to 1. Now, we divide this new interval of uncertainty which is 0.5 to 1 again into 4 equal parts. So, this will do in the stage 2. So, my stage 2 the interval becomes 0.5 to 1. It was 0 to 1 in the previous stage, now it is 0.5 to 1. Note that 50 percent has been removed. So, x 1, x m and x 2 are obtained as 0 0.625, 0 0.750, 0 0.875. So, basically you divide 0 0.5 by 4. Function values f 1, f m and f 2 are obtained and here you see f 1 is greater than f m and f 2 is greater than f m. f 1 is greater than f m and f 2 is greater than f m. So, we delete a x 1 and x 2 b. So, now again we set x 1, x m and x 2 as new a, x m and b. The new interval of uncertainty now will be 0 0.625 to 0.875. Again you divide this interval into 4 equal stages and let us go to the next stage. So, this stage my interval has been reduced to 0 0.625 to 0 0.875. So, this So, the interval 0 0.875 to 0 0.875 is divided into 4 equal parts and accordingly find out x 1, x m, x 2, find the function values and continue. You continue like this and you will obtain optimal value as around 0 0.75. Consider Another problem f x equal to 100 minus x whole square, consider the initial interval as 60 to 150. Obviously, the optimal solution is x equal to 100. So, take it as a homework and solve it by interval halving method. Perform 3 iterations and you will see that the midpoint of the interval after 3 iterations is already 99.375, very close to 100 complete these as a homework. With this, we would like to stop here.